Number five, you believe in magic. One form of magic going on in martial arts is the prescribed rules of the masters. Although it's part of the etiquette of martial arts to honor the wisdom and experience of age, and, and indeed it should be an attribute of any quality human being to respect wisdom and age, the teaching of some legendary figure tends to become dogma, though. When it's a good idea, and most of them are, it's okay to follow it, but you should follow it because it's a good idea. And the problem is that the hallowed voices of upper-level karate often completely contradict each other. Shrite styles pull a hand to here, but Nahate styles pull a hand to here. Kyokushin pulls it all the way up here, but Wadoryu only pulls to here. <laughs> I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong. I'm just pointing out that if there isn't a general agreement on where the hand goes, there is not likely a right or wrong about anything. A lot of the conflict between people of different styles stem from the fact that there's a tendency to think that there's a universally correct way to do things. Believing in magic uh, might mean that you believe in the glitz of paraphernalia. There seems to be an inverse relationship between the quality of karate training and the amount of paraphernalia associated with a school. You can find some places that have more investment in their silkscreen shirts and jackets than in their training equipment. You can usually spot groups that are big on ego and short on authenticity by the amount of writing on their uniforms. There's a patch here, there's, some, there's a patch there, some art there. It starts spilling down to the pant legs. One uh, cult leader that I knew, um, and that's what he was, gave special rings to his disciples, his, his top students. And uh, not only that, but the, the finger that the ring was worn on denoted your status, how close you were to him. <clears throat> the ring, by the way, was said to be 156 different weapons. This stuff does nothing more than emphasize the connection to the tribe, but many people seem to feel like these outward badges of belonging give them some kind of power, like a magic charm. And now the most magical of all, magic tricks. People in the martial arts business and I mean people who are commercial operators first and martial artists second, have been using magic tricks to increase their celebrity status and to instill in their students enough awe that they continue to command their respect. Uh, Bruce Lee was legendary for this, and people still point to these things as evidence of his greatness. He did a lot of these kinds of stunts, and people still think he was amazing years after his death. The famous one-inch punch that knocked back a guy who was already slightly leaning backward. Uh, an, an upward fast shove against someone who's not standing in a balanced position. Anyone can do this. The wild kicks that actors were forever running into with their faces without trying to defend themselves at all. Movies are great for creating magic. And 40 years later, people keep talking about how he was so fast the camera couldn't catch him. You know who else blurs pictures? Me. How about a movie contract? One of the things that is still talked about as evidence of Bruce Lee's speed is how he could snatch a coin from your palm before you could close your fingers. This is a trick. It is not evidence of any speed or any greatness. Watch. Here's a coin. I want you to close your hand when you see me coming to get the coin as fast as you can. Just as soon as you see my hand move, close your fist. And there's the coin. Let's try it again. You ready? That's it. Ready? And there's the coin again. And this is possible because of two little tricks. One, 
the human body can do this faster than it can do this. And secondly, when I hit the palm, I'm creating a shock that bounces the coin up into my own palm. It's a trick. I had a girlfriend years ago who could put a cherry in her mouth, eat the cherry, tie the stem into a knot with her tongue and take it out all tied up. That is infinitely more complicated than the magician's trick of taking a coin out of someone's hand and leaving another. Was my girlfriend uh, more worthy of acclaim than Bruce Lee? Come to think of it, I married her. Then there was a guy I had contact with back in the 1970s who had a large following, uh, boosted tremendously by his demonstrations of breaking huge piles of ice. This was board breaking on steroids. His hundreds of followers and his audiences thought he was the most dangerous man alive. And then I was present one night when he failed to break the ice in a large arena full of people. I watched him sweat bullets when the trick failed. His uh, lackey who prepared the display failed to have the ice blocks properly scored so they would break. You never saw that guy again. It was a magic trick. I'm sure there's still people who do this sort of thing and uh, I'm out of the loop so I don't know. Listen, breaking stuff as a personal test of penetration is valid. Spectacles are made to hypnotize you into being a true believer and to sell you something. The only real magic is continued improvement, not using your internal energy so you don't have to bother blocking. And then there's this kind of nonsense. 